So this morning's reading is From the Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Nobody's life is entirely free of pain and sorrow. It's a question of learning to live with them rather than trying to avoid them. The mind, to ensure that it remains in control, seeks continuously to cover up the present moment with past and future. You can always cope with the present moment, but you cannot cope with something that is only a mind projection. Although the present moment sometimes feels unacceptable, unpleasant, or awful, it is what it is. Step back and observe how the mind labels it, and how this labeling process, this continuous sitting in judgment, creates pain and unhappiness. By watching the mechanics of the mind, you can step out of its resistance patterns, and you can then allow the present moment to be. This will give you a taste of the state of inner freedom from external conditions, the state of true inner peace. Whatever the present moment contains, accept it as if you had chosen it. Always work with it, not against it. Make it your friend and ally, not your enemy. This will miraculously transform love. <laughs> because that's what we need to do, right? When we go into that deep, dark space, that's what we're doing. So we're reaching for that light, for that hope, for that love that we know is there and exists. And we do that when, when things just aren't looking like we want them to look. How's that? Sometimes, I don't know, maybe you've never been in this space where there's a long list of things that seem to be going wrong. You ever been in that space? <laughs> Or maybe you're in that space of just worrying all these things are going to go wrong. <clears throat> or we just simply don't like what's going on around us. Um, and what happens when we get in that space? Well, our first reaction, not always, for most of us, tends to be um, jumping into worry, going into fear. Maybe it's similar to a situation that's happened before and we just go, oh my gosh, that was a tragedy last time, now what am I going to do? Or how is this going to work out when, when it, what we call a big issue comes to the forefront? Because we simply can't imagine how it's going to be fixed, how life is going to take care of that. So we feel like we have to jump in on that and make decisions and decide how it's going to um, be fixed. That usually doesn't go well. <laughs> Well, we, we do like to imagine, uh, we can imagine that things are going to work themselves out. We don't always know how. We forget to trust that it's always happened in the past, right? That things have always worked themselves out because that hindsight, as they say, is absolutely 2020. Instead, our human selves for some reason likes to go into that state of panic, of worry, and play that really, I say, fun, sarcastically, and very exhausting what-if game. Anyone ever done that one? Yeah. I don't know if that's just innate in this or what it is. It is, though, as Eckhart Tolle said in that reading that Sue shared, we can't cope with something, we can't deal with something that's a mind projection. And basically, that's what the past and the future are, our mind projections. Trusting life should not be a difficult process. But for some reason, we make it that way. We like to struggle with it. We like to resist it. Several years ago, I'm talking a few, like probably 20, uh, a friend of mine, I was going through a time of lack of trust, let's say, and a lot of worry. And I came into work one day, and she had put one of those scrolling messages on my computer, and you've probably seen it. It says, good morning, Mrs. God. I am going to handle all of your problems today. I don't need your help. <laughs> so go have a good day. My immediate reaction to that was, yeah, I wish. <laughs> right? Oops, and that was a great wake-up call for me. If 
we move out of our own way, if we move out of that space of worry and fear and let life take care of the details, I can absolutely guarantee you that things are going to work out much better that way than if we do it ourselves. When life becomes challenging, and let's face it, we all get to have challenges. That's just part of the process. It's a lot more difficult, though, when we're in the middle of that stuff, um, to recognize that we have the capability as well as the capacity to handle whatever it is that's going on in our lives. When difficulties do arise, it behooves us to know, to tap into that reservoir of strength that we each and all have, to rise above those challenges simply by remembering who we are. That's what I love about that song, just remember who you are. Instead of, um, instead of doing that though, a lot of times we move in and we start questioning our beliefs. We start questioning the existence of that intelligence that's greater than I. How could life possibly work this out? I'll bet it's never seen this before, right? And that's what happens when we move into that ugly space, if, if I may call it that, when we allow that worry and that fear to consume us. We go into that dark space. And what I want you to know is that God is there too, right? God is in all of it. There isn't really any good or any bad. It just is. It's so much easier for us to have faith in life when everything's rosy and beautiful, isn't it? When we feel like singing and dancing and the butterflies are fluttering and the rainbows are out on a clear day, right? Isn't it so much easier to have a lot of faith and a lot of trust in life when that's going on? However, what happens is everything's going along beautifully and then something shows up we don't like or we don't want or we don't really think we are capable of moving through. Those are called the ups and downs of human existence. And we each and all get to um, participate in that. It's balancing that dark and that light. And as they say, stars, we cannot see those stars without having darkness. Something to really think about, right? There's this um, story about this man who's going to a really, really important meeting. And he gets to the parking lot, and this parking lot is jam-packed full, and he can't find his face. So what does he do? He's desperate. And he looks up to him, and he said, God, if you can find me a parking space, I promise I'll start going back to church every week. <laughs> we ever pleaded with God? So those words, before those words are out of his mouth, that parking space, um, a parking space, opened up right in front of him. So he looked at me and said, never mind, God, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't we do that, come on. <laughs> we ask for help, and then we do it our own darn way anyway, don't we? <laughs> We ask for support, we ask for guidance, we go into prayer, and then we do what we want to do. I love that story, because I think we've all been there, is I think why we, why we let out. <clears throat> so much of the time, we are in one extreme or the other. We either love life and it's rosy and fabulous, or we're on the other side of it, looking at, oh my gosh, what the heck do I do with this? And most of the time, we're able to hold on to that feeling of hanging in there, of seeing, seeing God in that situation, um, even if we have to fake it until we make it, sometimes we say. And at least we feel like we can see a light at the end of the tunnel. What happens, though, when we can't see or experience that light, when we don't feel it? How do we get through those times? How do we get through those times where we feel like we're existing but not really living? We feel like there's no hope, that there is no end in sight. As chance would have it, I have an answer to that question. 
Emmett Fox actually has an answer to that question. He has a pamphlet entitled The Golden Key. And this is how he answers that quandary. He tells us to turn away from our problem and to turn to God. In other words, stop thinking about the problem and think about God, life, source, universe, love instead. That's reaching for the light. Make sense? When you do that, you will be absolutely amazed at the clarity that comes in. Things begin working out more easily. You're following that guidance a little bit more closely. And things are moving in a way that you never even realized could be possible. We need that connection, though. We need that connection with love. And it's when we trust life that we encounter those aha moments. Those moments that we all love so much of that deep realization that life is on our side, that life does have our back, that life loves us. We sense that intimate connection of, with, with all of life, but with love, with security, with respect, with all of it. And we move into that space of life can't get any better than this. This is perfect. How could I ever have doubted my faith or my beliefs uh, before. Yes, I agree. That's important. Many of our blessings, and we each have a myriad of blessings in our life, but those blessings can stay buried for years if we stay in a space of complacency or a place of comfort, and we don't ever get outside of that little box. Because the truth is quite often, we only realize the full value of those blessings in our life when difficulties come along. Life's challenges don't present themselves to punish us. And I know that that's something that a lot of us, over the years, as, as growing up, we've been taught. And that just simply isn't the truth. Those challenges come up in our life to remind us what's meaningful, what's valuable. I know that we've all had someone in our life who's, whom we love dearly, and they've been rather ill, or maybe they've moved on and transitioned to that next expression. And we've all gone through that, and all of a sudden, we remember what's valuable. Yeah? We remember that life is what's valuable. Friendship, love, connection. Not the eight to five that we go to every day. Not the petty bickering or wars or anything else. Those aren't the important things. And so those challenges in our life do bring up those valuable things in our life. And we all have strengths and skills that we don't even know exist until a crisis comes up until we have the need to use those strengths or those skills. And it's usually in times of really great difficulty that we're forced to call upon that skill set, to use them. And we just go, wow, where did that come from? It comes from deep within. It comes from life, from that source that lives within you. When life throws challenges at us, it's certainly not a time to give up. It's the ideal time to reconnect with life, with that highest and that best that lies within us. That's the time that we want to reach for that life, to pull from deep within ourselves, to understand that it's not a punishment, that God, life, is actually growing us for bigger and better things in our life. It's an opportunity to learn, to be able to share with more people. And when you go deep within, when you really connect with that higher part of yourself, you will find that in that space your greatest motivation, your greatest creativity, your inspiration, all that strength that you didn't even know you had. And with each challenge that comes into our life, we have a new opportunity to discover what skill set that we have brought with us along the way, that we have picked up, that we have learned. 
Sometimes we don't even know it's there. Most of the times, until we need it. We can begin the process of trust by being just as confident that things are going to work out when they look crazy and chaotic as they will when everything looks fine and rosy. I love this, this image. This is this great? You talk about trust. I don't think I put my head on that dog's mouth. <laughs> Isn't that a sweet picture, though? And here, here's what I want to say. Just because things look peaceful and calm in our life doesn't mean that's an indication of security. That security comes from within. That comes through and from our source of life. And that security, that source, our well-being is certainly not dependent on anything that's going around, on around us, out here. Right? That security is always from within. That's true whether it's the economy, our finances, our children, our family, whatever. Trusting and turning over our challenges um, to, to God, knowing that with God all things work together for the highest and best good of all concern. That's where our security lies. And being able to do that and know that all is well. Have you ever found that when your circumstances begin to look better, that you begin trusting God a little less and yourself a little bit more, kind of like the guy in the parking lot? Have you ever found that to be true? We ought not be any less dependent upon our source when things are going good as when they're not going so good. As when we don't like the way things are moving. It's important for us to be in balance, to stay in balance, to stay in that flow, to maintain that intimate connection with, with life. And by the way, good circumstances are only an illusion of security. Really, how fast does that change? We've all seen that, right? Things are going like this. Yeah. I've certainly been experiencing that in my life lately. You know, we have the ups and we have the downs. And it, when things look good, it's easy to, it's much easier to see how things are going to work out for us. But isn't it amazing how quickly we panic or begin to question what's happening when things don't look so good? in that next moment or in that next day. That's what I want you to see, is that good circumstances, if you will, really are not very secure. It isn't about our circumstance. It isn't about our stories. It's about what we do with that, how we respond to it. The great news there is that those bad circumstances are also an illusion. That's an illusion of lack of security. So the truth is this. It just is. We go back to the beginning with what Sue read. Life just is what it is. And it's up to us to accept that and to know that resistance is nothing short of a little nuts because it only hurts us. There's not enough room. I love this. I read this the other day. There's not enough room in your mind for both worry and faith. And you get to decide which one lives there. It really is that simple. So believe in life's willingness to help you through the tough times. Know that things do work together for good. Life is always most difficult when we can't imagine what's on the other side of our challenge, of our trouble when we can't see, let alone imagine, how it's going to work out. Trust is not easy all the time. It stretches our faith. And we can see that there are difficult situations. And when we trust, um, we're called to believe that what seems impossible is really a workable situation. 
we can remember all the good things and go back with our hindsight. Remember all those really good things that life has done for us in the past. And if it happened once, it can and will absolutely happen again. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't an accident. So whenever you're tempted to worry or to feel hopeless, put a different, better thought in your head. Think about God, spirit, life, universe, love, whatever. Think about that and keep doing that every time one of those thoughts occur to you. It's a very easy and effective way for, to stop worrying as you replace those thoughts with thoughts of God, just as Emmett Fox um, suggests that we do. So I want to close with these thoughts this morning. I want you to realize that it's much better to perceive things in life as neutral. Not necessarily good or bad. We don't have to do that. Choose to see life circumstances from a soul's perspective, from a higher point of view, and know that in the very core of your being that everything always works out for the good of all involved. And that actually includes you as well. And so this week, I would invite you to do this. Simply trust the process. And so thank you for being here while I shared this truth as I understand it.